Good evening, everybody. How are you? Another Friday, and here we are trying to go on our situation and starting a new unit. But today I'm going to explain something how we're going to work on next uh, week. I'm going to, to do it using Valencian just in case there are any doubts, there is any doubt. And after the explanation, I'm going to start today's class. Bon, eh, vos lo explique en Valencia, porque si no, no me harán dudas para la semana que viene. Mireu, hoy, además de donar el writing más importante para el nivel B2, no B2, B2-2, ¿vale? El que sería para el curso. Eh, um, por tanto, es el writing en compañía del essay y del article, un de más importantes que en de tractar y saber. Per tant, avui, per centrar-me en el report. Quan acabe la classe, vos enviaré tot el material. A més, com hem acabat el tema 9, que és el més important, diríem, d'aquest període que hem passat de confinement, vos vaig a passar-vos un quick test que repassa tot el tema 9. M'agradaria que sou revisar-ho tot, anotar-ho qualsevol dubte que teniu, que us dono a repetir, podeu, que la gent, me sigo en permeis els dubtes que té per a jo poder solucionar-los. Però havia pensat el següent. A veure, el dimeri és com anem molt bé de temari, perquè anem a acabar el temari, també li hem dit a Ximó que les proves de la EOI, conselleria ha dit per ara que planifica la realització de les proves per a setembre. Setembre serà la prova, passarà unes setmanes, jo penso que serà novembre quan serà la recuperació. Per tant, la setmana que ve parlarem a veure per al curs següent, la matrícula i com estan les coses, perquè nosaltres també hem de pensar opcions per a facilitar-vos-ho per al curs següent. Per tant, havia pensat que fareu el tema 9, que qualsevol dubte s'ho anotareu, i el dimetre següent no farem videoclasse, perquè avui, quan acabi d'explicar el report, farem l'activitat que seria per al dimetre, i així no teniu tot adelantat. I el dimetre serà a les 6 i mitja, que si algú arribava a hora a les 6, a les 6 i mitja, ja us diré de quina manera. Si tots teniu Gmail, podem fer-ho per Hangouts o per Google Meet. O podem fer-ho per Zoom, si us raoneu per WhatsApp i m'ho digueu a mi, que és el que us raonat. Jo us passo un link, o si esteu tots en Google, teniu tots Gmail, no passa res. Us puc passar un enllaç o puc fer el correu enviar-vos la invitació. Inclús jo penso que vosaltres sabeu molt millor que jo com funciona això. Però a les 6 i mitja estaria bé tots connectar-se per resoldre dubtes i ja explicar-vos un poc el que havíem pensat per al curs següent per a les matrícules. Perquè sí que m'agradaria fer un examen que repassara les temes més importants perquè jo més o menys sí que sé he estat la primera i la segona avaluació amb vosaltres. He de comptar les faltes d'assistència però és que han quedat en el curs la majoria teniu l'assistència totalment coberta i a més heu estat seguint els cursos online superbé. He de contar això, però també he de diagnosticar millor per a passar al B22 l'any que ve. Donar-vos el certificat per a passar l'any que ve al B22. No obstant, jo sempre parlo dels alumnes. Hi ha alumnes que per circumstàncies personals o com s'han vist en el curs m'hi diuen Sònia, jo preferís quedar-me en el B21 i afiançar speaking, el listening. Tot se pot parlar perquè en un segon idioma no són escalons. Els nivells no es passen d'un B2-1 a un B2-2, d'un A2 o un B1 en un curs. Sabeu que són habilitats, són skills. Jo sempre dic que és com una muntanyeta, no són escalons. Si ho penseu tot això. Per tant, ho hem de fer el report, us passaré el quick test, el feu, i com us passaré les respostes, seu corregit. Tot el que tinga un mal, o inclús quan s'ho corregiu, no ho enteneu, s'ho anoteu, i la setmana que ve, el dimecres, en la tutoria, podríem dir-li tutoria, podeu exposar-lo. O enviant un mail amb els dubtes, jo m'he mirat a veure els dubtes que teniu, i podem també exposar-lo en classe. Queda clar? Per tant, si no veieu un vídeo classe el dimecres, és perquè estem fent la tutoria. És clar? Yes? Bé. And now, after this explanation, Let's start with the report. The task, the writing of the report, the task, the proposal was in your page 91. 
And after this page, we go on on the writing bank for the explanation. Ready? Steady. Go. And here it is. Yes, in your page 91, the proposal was writing. Go to the writing bank, page 119, but I'm totally what I said that now, writing a report. You have to write a report for a website about good places for eating out or entertainment in your city. Well, now with the confinement, because of coronavirus, we cannot um, either go into it out or having entertainment, but let's think about this summer. But before explaining the report, what is a report? And here you have the explanation. What is a report? Because you have to know before writing, you have to know what kind of writing is a report. Then a report is a formal document, then you do not have to use contractions, no contractions, yeah, prepared by one person or a group of people who have been studying a particular subject and you have studied about certain aspects and then you write a report, it's usually informing, mm -hmm. then, then it's formal and you do not have to express your personal opinion. It's not uh, for and against. It's not an opinion essay. It's a report. Objective. You must be objective. Facts. You have to use facts, not opinion. Is it clear? Well, tip to follow. These are the tips to follow when writing um, a report. Number one, it must start with a clear and factual heading, valen titular, que expresa es fets de manera clara. Mm? The introduction says what the aim of the purpose is, es el propósito, la finalidad, el objetivo de la finalidad, and how the information was obtained. De qué manera he obtenido la información. Subheadings, los subtitulares dirían, el que continúa el titular, divide the information into logical sections. Mm? And the conclusion, of course, provides a brief summary of the information and may include recommendations for improvement. This is optional to include recommendations for improvement. Is it clear? Then, now we know what a report is. What do we have to do? We have to go, everybody, on your page 119, writing a report. And here you have, in your book, a report. And it says, read a report on restaurants with a banner. Well, you don't have a banner. But think of suitable headings for paragraphs 1, 3, and 4. Because you have to write heading. Each paragraph has a heading. Then, you have been asked to write a report on either good place for eating out, or entertainment in your town for an English language magazine. Then you have, before writing, you have to plan the content. Then decide which report you are going to write. Give those options, good places for eating out or entertainment in your town. Then you have to decide which of these ones you are going to write about. Two, decide what headings you can use to divide up your report. Quis titulars, quis titulars vas a ficar en cada párrafo. And three, decide what information to include under each heading. This report must be organized in three or four paragraphs and you have to use 120 or uh, from 120 to 108 words. Mm -hmm. And here you have useful language you know, or expressions. You are generalizing because you have to be very objective. Yeah, you have to talk about facts. Most or 
the majority of cinemas in my town. Or cinemas are usually mm, tend to be, in general or in general speaking, almost always or nearly always. And this is talking in general. You have to use this kind of language. And even at work, in your profession, at work, you can be asked to write a report. A mí lo que te voy a poder mandar vos un informe de cuál se va al aspecto, si te voy a operar un departamento, lo que sea. Then, which is this? The one. This report, the sample, has chosen eating out. You know, the, the title is Eating Out in London. And here you have the aim, the purpose, the introduction. This report describes various options for students who want to eat out while staying in London. That it is the purpose, the description of different options. Number one, think about the heading and write down the heading. ¿Quién título significaría? Fast food. The majority of fast food restaurants are cheap and clean. And the service is fast, but they are often noisy and crowded. And of course, the food is the same all over the world. World food. London has restaurants offering food for many parts of the world. For example, India and China. These are often relatively inexpensive and have good quality food and nice atmosphere. Then think about which could be the heading. It's talking about the two main kinds of food, the variety, the kinds of inexpensive, fast. Think about that. Number two is already done. Value for money. Qualitat real, buena qualitat en relació a real, no? Good value for money. Gastro pubs. These are pubs which serve high quality food but tend to be slightly cheaper than the majority of mid-range restaurants. Generally speaking, the food is well cooked and some have very imaginative menus. I love gastro pubs. Italian restaurants. You can normally get a good pasta dish and salad in most Italian restaurants without spending too much. But be careful. Some restaurants have very expensive wine lists. Then the title, the heading is Value for Money. Number three, we have um, the heading Missing to. I'm going to read it. Um, there are many options if you want to try somewhere special, but be aware that this nearly always means spending a lot of money. French restaurants, for example, are often expensive and also restaurants run by celebrity chefs. And number four, another amusing heading. Don't make your meal cost more by ordering expensive drinks. If you have a special restaurant in mind, don't forget to book in advance, because the best restaurants are usually poor, especially at weekends. Even if you have a limited budget, take advantage of the different restaurants that London has to offer. Here you have different tips now, so go to different consejos. Well, pause the video, para el video, y pique un titular que pensé que sería apropiado. And now let's see the options. Well, fast food, world food, from India, China, inexpensive, good quality, cheap. Then, which are the headings? Well, if you are 
on a small budget. Quando tens um pressuposto ajustado, que é por teto. Hmm? Or could be eating out cheaply. Yeah? Could be another heading. Number two is value for money. Well, let's see number three. Many options. Mm, some were special, spending a lot of money, French restaurants, celebrity chefs. These are what? Going out or eating out for For a special occasion, yeah. For a special occasion, it's worth. I'm going to write it down. Yeah. A number of, the last one, it's a kind of conclusion could be, yeah. Don't make your meal cost more if you have a special restaurant to book in advance and uh, take advantage of the different restaurants then this is some advice yeah or general advice or things to take into account could be the heading things to take into account or yeah to take into account when eating out in London. Yeah, that's, this could be another heading. Do you understand what you want to do? What you have to do is to take, to, to know what you um, are going to talk about and write a heading. And you have um, the title, the aim, the introduction, then one heading, subheadings, yeah. Um, then you have the explanation, Another heading, then subheadings, explanation. Another heading, then um, then you 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 your report is eating out in London. Then you have um, you have decided to talk about this inexpensive, this good value for money, special occasions, and general advice. Then you have to bear in mind the importance of headings in the report. Yeah, well, this was um, your book's proposal. But I'm going to send you another layout and extend it. Then this is my or what you are going to get by mail. So I can be able to spend mail. Then a report, paragraph plan, how to plan it. Well, of course, paragraph one is going to be the introduction. Then what do I have to do with the introduction? You have to state the aim of the report or proposal. You have to separate it into sections and give each section a suitable heading. It's what we have just done. Reports and proposals are formal. Then please do not use contractions. What kind of useful language can I use here? Well, the aim of this report is to Como es una finalidad, utilice el chume sentimiento. The aim of this report is to talk about a public transport in Valencia or advantages of taking um, public transport in Valencia. In this report, I will deal with... Um, I have been asked to write a report about eating out in London and I'm going to deal with it now, whatever, and useful language. Paragraph 2, what? Main points, for example, the strengths, advantages, advantages, the spoons, parts, and then give your opinion, then you have to, well, give your opinion, I wouldn't give your, my opinion, yeah? You have to be objective, and then objective, don't use I think, yeah? Use passive and impersonal structures to convey a more serious, formal style. Use linkers of addition, moreover, on the one hand, on the other, contrast and consequence to structure your arguments. And use numbers or valid points 
for a list. In my opinion, personally, I don't know if I, I'm going to use it. You, you, the video means, literally speaking. Hmm? Furthermore, on top of this, however, on the one hand, on the other, why, therefore, then you have very important, as always, the linking words. Part of the main points, for example, weaknesses, um, is put negative, disadvantages, hmm? Explain and justify your opinion. Despite the fact that, y ahí que te quedan a seguir, yo donaré, despite the fact that, a pesar del hecho que, plus a clause, muy bien, es una oración. This is because, for instance, another problem is, yeah, and paragraph four, it could be the kind of Conclusion, as always, making a recommendation if required. If not, the conclusion, save your recommendations for the end. For example, I strongly recommend that, why don't you, well, it's less formal for reports. In conclusion, all in all, all things considered, having taken everything into consideration, I conclude that, I love this. Having taken everything into consideration, I conclude that. Then this could be um, the layout for you to use in your report. This is the layout and these are different expressions, useful language uh, for you to, to use. Then as always, I'm going to send you the layout, um, an example of reports and useful language. Is it clear? Well, then, um, you have 15 days, two uh, semanas, to send me a report. Mm -hmm. Very important writing for people attending the exam. And after that, we're going to start the new unit I was telling about. We're going to start unit 10A. Y nos quedan, nos quedan dos temas y ya acabemos con Tingut mm, del tema. Porque en teoría, la semana siguiente o la otra ni dio ya examen. Pero tanto va a decir que acabaría en el temario y la van a acabar. Bueno, Chane, everybody, in your box, let's go back. And Chane, the dark side of the moon, la cara oculta de la luna. Mm. Today we are going to talk about scientific facts, myth, yeah and very interesting uh, things that we think that are true, but maybe they are not. It starts saying, discuss the following statements, and you think they are F, facts, hechos, or M, myths, and say why. Later on, you have to pause the video and write F, fact, or M, myth. After that, we're going to listen to a scientist on our radio program discussing its science, its statements. Then, scientific facts or myths. So, let's go on. Number one, let's say, what do you think, fact or myth? A coin dropped from a very high building can kill someone on the ground? Oh, I don't know. Una moneda, si la tires desde un lloc molt alt, de un edifici molt alt, va matar algú que està baix? Mm. Don't try it, just in case. No preveu, vale? Uh, two. We only use 10% of our brains. Very interesting. Some people use 0%. Yeah? Number three, there is no part of the moon which is permanently dark. No ni a cap part de la lluna que estiga totalment oscura. Four, rubber tires, son es pneumatics, protect a car from lighting. Do you think so? Les rachos? I don't know. Number five, Albert Einstein, look, 
a very famous face, everybody knows this face. Albert Einstein was very bad at maths at school. I don't know if it's true, but the teacher, his teacher, Albert Einstein's teacher, told uh, his parents that he will never do anything interesting or important in his life. Que no faría más res importante en la segunda vida. Because he was all the time messing at class. Más aburría. He was very bored at class. Six, antibiotics don't kill viruses. Don't kill viruses, no matter as virus. Number seven, a full moon makes people and animals go mad. Storna locos, storna bochos, bochos. And number eight, bats are blind. Murciélagos son cegos, but they infect coronavirus, no? Bats are blind. So, think, fact or myth. Write it down and we'll check. Aneu a, aneu a apuntant a veure què penseu i ara anem a escoltar. Ready? Steady, go. Five point twenty-seven. Let's start with the first one about the coin. Many people think that a coin dropped from the top of the Empire State Building, for example, would be travelling so fast that if it hit a person on the ground, it would kill them. However, this just isn't true. Coins are not aerodynamic, and they are also relatively small and light. So, although a person on the ground would certainly feel the impact, the coin wouldn't kill him. It wouldn't even hurt him very much. What do you think? Why it's so small that it would never kill a person? Yeah, and they are not aerodynamic, they say. And they are relatively small and light. Yeah, then would never kill a person. Number two is one of the most popular scientific myths that we only use 10% of our brains. Perhaps this is because people would like to think that they could be much more intelligent if they were able to find a way to use the other 90%. In fact, neurologists haven't been able to find any area of our brains which isn't being used for something. Number three. The well, then, it's a myth. Then they can't find a, uh, an area in our brains that uh, which is not being used then of the moon? Well, that only exists as the title of a Pink Floyd album. People used to think that there was a side of the moon that was always dark, that never got the sun. But of course that isn't true. The sun illuminates every part of the moon at some point during the 24-hour cycle. It is true that there's a side of the moon that we never see, that's to say we always see the same side of the moon, but the other side isn't always dark. Now, well, then it's not true, yeah? 24 hours is light. Number four, the one about rubber tires. A lot of people think that rubber tires on a car will protect you from lightning in the same way that wearing rubber shoes will protect you from an electric shock. Well, it's certainly true that if you're caught in a thunderstorm, it's much safer to be inside a car than outside. But the tires have nothing to do with it. When lightning strikes a car, it's actually the car's metal body that protects the passengers. It acts as a conductor and passes the electrical current down to the ground. Number five. Wow, very frightening, yeah? Rubber function works if you have rubber shoes or rubber clothes, but not in the car because what protects us is made of uh, metal. A metal is a conductor, you got. Poor old Einstein. Over the years, he's often been used as an example to show that you can do very badly at school and still be very successful in life. And people have actually said that he wasn't very good at maths or science. But in fact, records show that the young Albert, as you would expect, got very high marks in maths and science. Very high marks. Number six. Antibiotics don't kill viruses. No, they don't, and it's a waste of time taking them if you have a virus. Antibiotics help your body to kill bacteria, 
not viruses. What's more, you can't exactly kill a virus at all, since a virus is not really alive to begin with. Stick to your doctor's advice and only take antibiotics when he or she specifically prescribes them. Problem is that it's often very difficult for a doctor to know if you're suffering from a virus or from a bacterial infection. Well, they don't kill bacteria, no viruses. The problem is that some doctors, they even don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's a virus or a bacteria. I don't know to prescribe you um, antibiotics or not. It's a problem, doctor. Number seven. I love the idea that a full moon can make people go mad, but I think this is only true for werewolves. For centuries, nearly all cultures have attributed special mystical powers to the full moon. And in fact, the English word lunatic, which can be used to describe a mad person, comes from the word lunar, which means to do with the moon. But in spite of a lot of scientific research, nobody has found any link at all between the full moon and insanity or crime. And finally, number eight, are bats really blind? Most British people probably think that they are, because we have the expression in English, as blind as a bat. But it's just not true. In fact, bats can see just as well as humans, even if they don't depend on their sight in the same way. Like dogs, bats rely heavily on other senses, like hearing and smell. They have a very advanced sound-based system, called echolocation, which allows them to know where they are when they're flying at night but they can certainly see. So, now it's time for you to write down your answer and listen again. Let's start with the first one about the coin. I'm going to go right Many in. people think that a coin dropped from the top of the Empire State Building, for example, would be travelling so fast that if it hit a person on the ground, it would kill them. However, this just isn't true. Coins are not aerodynamic and they are also relatively small and light, so although a person on the ground would certainly feel the impact, the coin wouldn't kill him. It wouldn't even hurt him very much. Number two is one of the most popular scientific myths, that we only use 10% of our brains. Perhaps this is because people would like to think that they could be much more intelligent if they were able to find a way to use the other 90%. In fact, neurologists haven't been able to find any area of our brains which isn't being used for something. Number three. The dark side of the moon? Well, that only exists as the title of a Pink Floyd album. People used to think that there was a side of the moon that was always dark, that never got the sun. But of course that isn't true. The sun illuminates every part of the moon at some point during the 24-hour cycle. It is true that there's a side of the moon that we never see, that's to say, we always see the same side of the moon, but the other side isn't always dark. Now, number four, the one about rubber tyres. A lot of people think that rubber tyres on a car will protect you from lightning in the same way that wearing rubber shoes will protect you from an electric shock. Well, it's certainly true that if you're caught in a thunderstorm, it's much safer to be inside a car than outside. But the tyres have nothing to do with it. When lightning strikes a car, it's actually the car's metal body that protects the passengers. It acts as a conductor and passes the electrical current down to the ground. Number five. Poor old Einstein. Over the years, he's often been used as an example to show that you can do very badly at school and still be very successful in life. And people have actually said that he wasn't very good at maths or science. But in fact, records show that the young Albert, as you would expect, got very high marks in maths and science. Number six. Antibiotics don't kill viruses. No, they don't. And it's a waste of time taking them if you have a virus. Antibiotics help your body to kill bacteria, not viruses. What's more, you can't exactly kill a virus at all, since a virus is not really alive to begin with. Stick to your doctor's advice and only take antibiotics when he or she specifically prescribes them. The problem is that it's often very difficult for a doctor yeah. to know if you're suffering from a virus or from a bacterial infection. Bacteria. Number seven. I love the idea that a full moon can make people go mad, 
but I think this is only true for werewolves. For centuries, nearly all cultures have attributed special mystical powers to the full moon. And in fact, the English word lunatic, which can be used to describe a mad person, comes from the word luna, which means to do with the moon. But in spite of a lot of scientific research, nobody has found any link at all between the full moon and insanity or crime. And finally, number eight, are bats really blind? Most British people probably think that they are, because we have the expression in English, as blind as a bat. But it's just not true. In fact, bats can see just as well as humans, even if they don't depend on their sight in the same way. Like dogs, bats rely heavily on other senses, like hearing and smell. They have a very advanced sound-based system, called echolocation, which allows them to know where they are when they're flying at night. But they can certainly see. Well, um, all of them were male. Only it was a fact that antibiotics don't kill viruses because they kill bacteria. And the other fact was that there is no a part of the moon which is permanently uh, dark because the sun illuminates it uh, 24 hours. And then, too many myths. Hmm? Then myth, another myth, a fact. Rubber tires protect a car from lighting. Another myth, because the car metal acts as a conductor. Number five, poor Albert Einstein, yeah. He got high marks. Uh, in maths, antibiotics, we said it uh, previously, then they kill bacteria, not viruses. And nobody has found evidence about the full moon. And bats um, can see as well as humans. Well, these were scientific facts, or some of them, most of them were myths, because people start telling a lot, a lot of things, but most of them are not true. So, now, focus on science, on vocabulary, and we are going to explain the next. We are on page 95, everybody, Patent Miranda C, hmm? page um, 95, everybody, vocabulary and pronunciation. Well, what happens in certain word families regarding with science? That Maybe they belong to the same family, word family, but each word, noun, adjective, verb, is pronounced or it has this stress syllable in a different uh, position. Then, look at the structure from the listening and then write the highlighted word in the table below. For example, this is one of the most popular scientific myths. Until very recently, scientists, then scientists, the first syllable is stressed. Scientific, the adjective, is the second syllable. But he got very high marks in maths and science is the first syllable. Then what we want to deal with that, that sometimes they all belong, the person, the noun, the adjective, and the subject matter. Uh, they belong to the same word family, but sometimes they have the stress syllable in a different place. Then let's um I would like you to pause the video, que para el video, in the top of the for example. Scientist, then you write the person, it's scientist, yeah. Scientist, which is the stress syllable, the first one. Then you have to write. You have to underline scientist. You have to underline the first one. It's scientist. But the adjective is scientific. And you have to be scientific. Then you have to focus that when it comes into an adjective, the stress syllable is the second syllable, scientific. And the subject of study, science, is also on the first syllable, science.
You understand? Yeah? Then please pause the video and do it at home. And after one minute, we'll correct. So, ready? Well, chemist is a person, and the pronunciation is the first one, chemist. Chemical is the adjective, and chemistry is the subject of a study. This coincides with the first stress syllable in all this. Hmm? The next one, how do you pronounce this? Very good. Biologist. But the adjective biological and biology. Then it changes the noun adjective. The next, how would you pronounce it? These three coincide in the pronunciation. It's the first syllable then physicist physical and physics the pronunciation and the last one geneticist also Genetic, 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 and the study of genetics. Well, as we have underlined it, we're going to listen for the pronunciation, then it's better for you. 5.28 Scientist Scientist Scientific Scientific Science Science Chemist Chemist Chemical Chemical Chemistry Chemistry Biologist Biologist Biological Biological Biology Biology Physicist Physicist Physical Physical Physics Physics Geneticist Geneticist Genetic Genetic Genetics Genetics Yeah Very important this um, scientific words. And now, please, you have another proposal. Now you have the following. It says, here you have certain vocabulary related to science, and you have to complete the sentence with a word from the list. Then you have discovery, facts, experiments that uh, have been already used, Guinea pigs, laboratory, research, side effects, test, and theory. I'm going to go reading and please fill in the gaps by using this important vocabulary regarding science. 1. Scientists, scientists carry out experiments in a Molt important el ver, mireu. Los científicos hacen, entonces digo, scientifics do, o make, no, llevar a cabo, muy importante. Los experimentos se llevan a cabo. Scientists carry out experiments, carry out a research, llevar una, una investigación, carry out a project, 
hmm? then carry out experiments in a tube. Archimedes made an important in his bar. Three, Isaac Newton's experiments proved his that gravity existed. Four, before a pharmaceutical company can sell new, they have to do to make sure they are safe. Five, scientists have to do a lot of into the possible of new drugs, medicaments, eh? some drugs, some drugs, eh? and people can volunteer to be in clinical trials. Well, pause the video. Pause the video, please. And let's see if you did it well or not. We are going to listen. Yeah. Now we are going to listen while you are um, thinking about how to fill in the gaps. Five point twenty nine. One. Scientists carry out experiments in a laboratory. Two. Archimedes made an important discovery in his bath. Three. Isaac Newton's experiments proved his theory that gravity existed. Four. Before a pharmaceutical company can sell new drugs, they have to do tests to make sure they are safe. Five. Scientists have to do a lot of research into the possible side effects of new drugs. Six. People can volunteer to be guinea pigs in clinical trials. Well, listen again, and they go, um... 5.29. One. Scientists carry out experiments in a laboratory. Laboratory, yeah? Two. Archimedes made an important discovery in his bar. Discovery, oh my god. Three. Isaac Newton's experiments proved his theory that gravity existed. Theory? Four. Before a pharmaceutical company can sell new drugs, Fox. they have to do tests to make Test. sure they are safe. Do test. Oh, coronavirus test. Yeah. Five. Scientists have to do a lot of research. Do research. Side effects of new drugs. Side effects. Efectos secundarios. Six. Uh, side effects. People can volunteer to be guinea pigs in clinical trials. Guinea guinea. Pigs, son conejitos de indias, uh, volunteer to be guinea pigs um, in clinical trials, in ensayos clinicos, uh, clinical trials. Well, this was important vocabulary regarding science. Did you do it well? So, we finish here today. Yeah. We finish here. And well, we finish here and then going to send you all the important um, layout and report you need to do uh, for, for you to have it in order to write your report. And please, for next uh, um, Wednesday, please, you have to do quick test number nine. Remember, any doubt you have to take note about that and we have to keep in in contact, uh, have a talk on your WhatsApp and for Wednesday at half past six, let's see the way of meeting. By Hangouts, I think that Google Meet or Zoom could be a good idea, but I don't know if you have most of you uh, Gmail and we have to uh, talk about that before Wednesday. 
And for the following video class, the following Friday, have a look at the reading comprehension on page uh, 96, please. Uh, only to have a reading on page 96. Then, is it clear? Yeah, you have to learn how to write a report. You have to do quick test, review quick test, and take notes about all the um, doubts. And we'll have a talk and we are going to see each other next Wednesday. But you have to talk about it by WhatsApp and let me know what's the best option. Is it clear? Well, see you on Wednesday. Bye bye and enjoy the weekend.